We're here with period seven, our blue period, and we're going to be talking about linear functions today. All right, so the whole goal of today is going to be figuring out how to graph lines and doing three different ways. The first way, I'm going to give you a point that the line goes through, as well as the slope of that line. The second way, we're going to look at finding the x and the y intercepts. And the third way, the most common way, the one we're going to use the most in this class, is to take a standard form linear equation, change it into slope-intercept form, and then graph it from that. All right? Now, what's really nice is that you guys have done all three of those things. Okay? So I'm hopeful that you'll feel very confident that you can do this today. So it's just a refresher. You've all done this. You're going to be great. Okay? So let's first talk a little bit about this slope-intercept form. The y equals mx plus b. Now, I know it's been a while, but what does that m represent? The slope, right? The slope. m for slope. Mmm, soup. I mean slope. Okay, what about the b? The y-axis. So not the y-axis, but the y-intercept. The y-intercept. All right? And you're going to learn today that if you have one point and the slope, you can graph any line. All you need is a point and the slope. What do you mean by the Any points. In this case, the point will be the y-intercept, 0, comma, a number. All right. Well, we're going to start doing example 1. It's just giving me any point on the line, not necessarily the y-intercept. OK? So let's try one where it gives me a point and the slope. All right, so this case, my point is 1, comma 1. That's not the y-intercept. The y-intercept will always be 0, comma, a number, or an owl with an eye patch. Okay? It will always be 0, comma, a number for the y-intercept. All right, so I know this is not the y-intercept. So I'm going to go to 1, 1, and put a point. So there's 1, comma 1. Make sure you put a point. Now, what is the slope? Two-thirds. Two All right, now let's talk about this. All right, when you do the slope as a fraction, the number in the numerator is your vertical movement. So this is your vertical movement. Or some of you have heard before, your rise. All right, when you arise in the morning, you become vertical. You were horizontal, you become vertical. Okay, for the denominator, that's going to be your horizontal move. That's your left and right. Or if you've taken algebra one, they usually say run. So rise over run. But I want to make sure you understand what those mean mathematically. It means the vertical movement and the horizontal movement. Okay, so take a look at our slope of two thirds. That means I'm going to be moving vertically two units and horizontally three units. But that's not specific enough. How do I need to move two units vertically? There are options, right? What are the options for vertical? Up or down. If I go up, that's a positive direction. So positive for up. All right? So I'm going to go up two. Now, if I want to move three units horizontally, I need to also move positive. Because a positive divided by a positive is still a positive. So what direction horizontally is positive? Which direction is positive? To the right. So that's going to be to the right. So I'm going up to right three. Up to right three. I'm putting a point. I'm going to pause here. Any questions on that? Up to right three. Please ask questions if you're a little confused. It's all good. All good. Okay, now, do you see if I went up to right three from that point, I'd be off my grid? So you're not expected to go further than that in the up and right direction. Okay, so if I want to go the other way, that means I need to go this way. So let's talk about that one. That means I'm going down two. But do you see how down is negative in the vertical direction? Down is a negative. So what direction do I have to move horizontally? Left. left. And left is also negative. 
So I'm just trying to show your brain that if you go down and left, a negative divided by a negative is still a positive. All right, so down and left is the same as up and right. Still a positive slope. All right? I do. I'm going to go down two and left three and put a point. And I believe you can go one more. I get students every year that ask, do I have to go all the way? And as I've said, and maybe not in this class, but in other classes, don't let any professor, teaching assistant, teacher, don't give them any reason to take points away from you. Like if students, a lot of students will stop here. You know, if I'm like, well, I want to see that one. Okay. Any questions on how I got those four dots? Yes, Kylie. It does matter where the dots go. They have to be there. Have follow the slope. If the slope had been three fourths, then I'm going up three over four. So it does matter. Leslie and then Clarissa. Oh, absolutely. Yes, you got it. Here I go. Clarissa. Like if you can't go, yeah, so I couldn't go, if I went up to right three, I'd be off the grid. You're done. Any questions on how to graph when there's slope and a point? This is the first example, the first way you have to do this. So for the, for the number zero, for the number, no, all That's coming later. That's called the y-intercept. I was just showing you this is not the y-intercept. All right, if they give me a point, zero comma a number, They've given me the y intercept. All right. Everybody good with example one? Excellent. Let's try another example. This time, I want to find the intercepts. Okay? So both the y intercept and the x intercept, when it gives me an equation in what we call standard form. So does everybody see this equation here? 2x minus 3y plus or equals 12? That's called standard form. All right, that form is ax plus by equals c. All right, so if you ever see any equation written like this, that's called standard form. Okay, it's not necessarily that it's not helpful. It's just, it doesn't immediately jump out at me what the slope is or what the y-intercept is. So standard form is a form that we'll use in this class, but in terms of linear equations, it's not the most helpful form. The most helpful form is slope-intercept which is coming in the last example. So for this example, though, let's find the x-intercept first. Now, for the x-intercept, that should always be in the form number comma zero. Okay, if you're having trouble remembering this, we're finding which intercept? The x-intercept. So where should the number be? In the x. That's always what your brain can do to help you which one is which. All right, so I'm going to rewrite the equation, 2x minus 3y equals 12. If my y value is going to be 0, right, for the x-intercept, my y value is 0, that means I'm going to make this y into a 0. So I'm plugging in 0 for y. Anything times 0 is 0. So this reduces to 2x equals 12. So what is going to be my x-intercept? Is 6. All right, and I would really appreciate it if you would write it in the ordered pair form. So 6, comma, 0. Questions on how to find the x-intercept? Because right, remember, the x-intercept is where your line crosses the x-axis. All right, and since it's on the x-axis, all right, and we're not going up or down, that's why the y value is zero. In the order of pair, it goes x and y, just like in the alphabet. All right, mathematicians try to help us out with that one. That would have been crazy if they went the other way, right? Right, all those times, A, B, C, D. Oh, not helpful at all, all right? Okay, let's do the next one, the y-intercept. So for the y-intercept, as we discussed on the last problem, that one's always going to be 0, comma, then the number. 0, comma, then the number. 
So I'm going to write down 2x minus 3y equals 12. But this time, because it's the y-intercept, it needs to be on the y-axis, so the vertical axis, so we're not moving left or right at all, so that's why our x is 0. So I'm going to replace x with 0. All right, so if you take out the 2 times the 0, because that's 0, you get negative 3y equals 12. So what is y going to be for this one? Negative 4. All right, and again, I prefer that you write it as an ordered pair. So I'm going to write 0, comma, negative 4. Okay, any questions? on finding the intercepts, okay? Now, from this point, if you have both intercepts, you have enough to graph the line. If you have two points on a line, you've got enough, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the grid and plot my two intercepts. So my x-intercept is six, zero. Here's that point over here, that's six, zero. You'll notice the x-intercept is on the x-axis, okay? And the y, intercept is 0, negative 4 on the y-axis. And then you can make your line. And just do your best. I recognize you don't have a ruler. Any questions on finding the intercepts and then using them to plot the line? Yes, Clarissa. So great question. So this problem is finished because it just says to find the intercepts and graph it. You could find the slope, all right, if you wanted to, just for funsies. So if you go from this point, this y-intercept, to this point, the x-intercept, you're counting up 4, right 6. So that's up 4, right 6. So the slope is 4 sixths. Or if you wanted to reduce it even further, two-thirds. And if you really wanted to impress your teacher, if you really wanted to impress your teacher, you could write y equals two-thirds x minus four. That's slope-intercept form. Now here I'm really going to blow your mind hole. That right here, this right here, and this right here, it's the same thing. <laughs> All right, do I need to get the scooper to scoop up your brain? Okay. Any questions on this problem? Obviously, what we just did in the last two minutes there was not necessary. Clarissa wanted to do it, and I said, let's do it. Okay? All right. Let's talk about slope intercept form. All right, and this is this last example is what you're going to do the majority when you're looking at linear equations. You want to put them in this form. y equals mx plus b. All right? That is the most helpful form. All right? So look at this one. What form is 2x minus 3y equals -9 in? Standard form. Very good. Right? And you're like, "Awesome, standard form. Not helpful." Right? Not really that helpful. So let's put it into slope intercept form. So I want my, let's write a different place. I want it to be in y equals mx plus b form. Okay, now I get a lot of students ask this every year, all right? Just because this says plus doesn't mean that's always going to be addition, all right? It could be subtraction. It's all good. All right, same thing with slope of m. It could be a negative slope. All right, so if we need it to be y by itself, I'm not going to move this y and the negative 3. I'm going to move this 2x to the other side by subtracting 2x. Now this is my preference. You can do whatever you like. But I like to write the minus 2x next to that constant because I don't want my brain to be thinking that those are like terms. You can write it underneath. That's fine. I just have, I've had students in the past that will try to combine them. All right? They're not like terms, so don't do it. Okay, so now you have negative 3y equals negative 2x minus 9. Please, 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 please. 
Get in the habit of putting your x before your constant. Okay? If you don't do this, it's going to make it a little tr tricky to try to get it into slope intercept form at the end. All right, are we there yet? Yeah. We're close, but we're not there yet. This says just y. Mine doesn't say just y. We have to divide by. No, don't divide by the y. Just the negative 3. We want to leave the y there. We want the y to stay there. But we want the, the negative 3 to go to the other side. So we have y equals, okay, now be careful here. What's negative 2 divided by negative 3? Positive 2 over 3. Okay, and we're going to have an x next to it. What about negative 9 divided by negative 3? Positive 3. And now you have made it into slope-intercept form. Let's pause here and make sure we feel good. Do you feel okay? Okay, so once you get here, it's kind of like a checkpoint. We're in slope-intercept form. Now I can write down the slope. What is the slope of our line? Two-thirds. Two and what is the y-intercept? I'm not going to write three. What am I going to write? Very good, Clarissa. Zero comma three. Get in the habit of writing that ordered pair so you know where to plot it. Okay. If you have the slope of a line and a point that the line goes through, you have enough to graph it. Now this looks similar to example one, where you have the slope and you had a point. Let's plot the point. Where is the y-intercept of 0, 3? It's on the y-axis. So 0, 3. My slope is positive. So I'm going to go up 2 and write 3. Up 2 and write 3 and put a point. Now this is my preference, and you can do whatever you like. If that slope had been negative, I would have gone up 2, but then I would have gone to the left 3. So what I always used to do, if it was possible, was I'd always go up, and if it was positive, I'd go to the right. If it was negative, I'd go to the left. That's the way I, I found the most success in high school. Okay, but it's up to you. All right, so if I want the other point, I need to go down 2. But if I went right 3, I'd be underneath, and that wouldn't make sense. So I go down 2 and left 3. Because even though that's a negative in both directions, you know a negative divided by a negative is still a positive slope. Yes, I want you to plot all the points that are possible. So can I plot any more? No, because I'd be off the grid. Everybody good? Excellent. Okay, so let's make our line. All right, and let's see if we have any questions on this whole process. This is example three, the last example. Even though this is five, it's the last example. Any questions? No questions? Excellent.